start this Thanksgiving. Live NFL games. Come to NFL Network. Eight primetime games on Thursday and Saturday nights. The run to the playoffs starts this Thanksgiving. Live NFL games on NFL Network. This NFL Films production is a presentation of the NFL Network. Okay. Don't move at all. You should. No. Yeah, we'll Roll 10, Mark. All right, another damn Lawrence Taylor tribute. It's not a tribute. Oh, what is it? It's a story. 20, yeah, 25-minute kiss-ass. It's actually 45 Lawrence, minutes. Just slobber all over him tape, okay. <laughs> okay, go ahead. In the history of the NFL, few players have had the impact of Lawrence Taylor, the Picasso of pro football who revolutionized the art of defense. He's changed the game of football uh, because he's just so dominating. It used to be that you say, well, our back block's him, and we go ahead and throw the pass. If you get a back block in Lawrence Taylor, you lose. guys that revolutionized the game when you played against the Giants with Lawrence Taylor you had to game plan for him and uh, throughout my 17 years there are a lot of great players and a lot of great teams but uh, first and foremost he stands out of my mind and the giant defense is because of him because you did not execute a play without knowing where he was and not only as a quarterback but as a complete offense I can't think of anyone that I know. There are some that are close to him, people that I know, that had a greater ability to will things to happen. Back, is looking in, he's over a pass, he's looking for King and something. There have been 10 Pro Bowls, two World Championships, and one unanimous MVP award. And yet you sometimes get the idea that Lawrence Taylor is never satisfied with his all-world status. Oh, oh, I get it. You don't want me to leave because of the game Sunday. Look, man, opportunities like this don't happen often. I mean, I've been to the championship bowl, but I ain't never been to another planet. No, he's not E.T. He's L.T. Son, I got to do better than this. That's a coming. Aikman back inside the five throws. Tipped high. Intercepted by Taylor. He'll score. Oh, Lawrence, the magician. 
Each year, every NFL general manager, coach, and scout pays Lawrence Taylor the ultimate compliment by scouring the nation in hopes of landing the new LT. When somebody say the next LT, they're not talking about a dunce. They're not talking about a, uh, a guy that didn't, uh, uh, they don't think highly of him. It stands for greatness. <laughs> I just want to say, I right? <laughs> like that. On a Monday night in 1983, Billy Sims, one of the quickest runners of his time, was caught from behind by Lawrence Taylor. It was one play among many that symbolized an intensity and desire rarely exhibited in major professional sports. Indeed, to find a style of play that is reminiscent to Taylor's, you may have to go back to another era. Once there was an equally popular New York legend who pushed the limits of competitive passion on a far different playing field. You talk about comparing Lawrence Taylor with the great athletes. And it's interesting, somebody mentioned Jackie Robinson the other day, and the, the, the similarity there is that each seems to be playing with a bonfire inside him. Jackie Robinson was in flames when he played baseball. Lawrence Taylor has been in flames when he's played football. Woo! Yeah, Mr. Referee! Get on his butt! Get him, Ralph! Get him! Put the go cards on! That's my boy! Woo! My first few years, few years um, uh, in the league, and, and uh, first five or six years, uh, I brought enthusiasm to the uh, to the team. Nobody, you know, people would uh, have a score a touchdown. And everybody was hey, or somebody would make a play on defense. Nobody would say anything. Uh, um, I think I brought enthusiasm back to the game. Uh, had people get excited about getting excited. Excitement, cat quickness. <laughs> When LT joined the Giants in 1981, everyone in the NFL was certain the prize rookie would step right into the lineup. Everyone, 
except his head coach. I remember talking to Ray Perkins, and Ray was very conscious like of the pecking order. He had been in the league, and when do you move the veteran out and you put the rookie in? And we had a discussion about that, and I said, Ray, that will be the easiest decision that you have to make. And uh, we had a, a, a linebacker playing right, uh, who was a right linebacker, a fellow from Penn State, I remember. And uh, the first day we lined up in practice, all of a sudden Lawrence was playing right linebacker. The coach didn't have to do anything. The player was smart enough to know. It was John Scorpan, who was a very bright, fine young man. And uh, there was no way that he, he was going to play in that spot. And he knew it. And Lawrence lined up there from day number one. He had this great intensity and this great quickness, and when the coaches saw that, they began to realize we have to exploit the abilities of this player, and that's what he did. He, he could do things that other players couldn't do. I played a different type of football game than I th think that they were used to, that I brought something different to the table that uh, maybe hadn't been seen in a while around here, but up until that point, a linebacker was just a linebacker. All he did was you know, he stopped the run, he went back and defended against the pass. The motor skills were just like anybody else. But um, as Bill Parcells watched me and evaluated me, uh, he was, allowed me to do a lot of different things, allowed me to rush the passer uh, because most of the time I made so many mistakes in the, uh, the pass defense, I was supposed to be dropping on this place, so I wouldn't drop or I'd rush. And that was my answer to everything. If you don't know what you're doing, just rush the quarterback, hell. See what happens. What happened was a pro football revolution. There had never been a defensive force quite like Lawrence Taylor, a man who could disdainfully crumple up an offensive game plan and send its beleaguered creators back to the drawing board. He changed the way the game was played on offense. They had to do something different. He may have invented the one-back offense. Joe Gibbs started using the one-back offense to deal with Lawrence Taylor. Taylor's impact on his own team was just as forceful. For nearly two decades, the Giants had struggled, posting only two winning seasons. It was no accident that the arrival of Lawrence Taylor coincided with New York's first playoff berth in 18 years. In the early years, they had some great teams here, and I'd, uh, I'd known that um, in the last few years, 10 or so, 10, 15, 20, how many years it was, that um, they hadn't, win, hadn't won a lot of football games, hadn't been to the playoffs. In the final game of the regular season, the Giants would finally reach the playoffs if they could beat the Dallas Cowboys. You know, this is what you've been waiting for. This is what the whole town has waited for. And I was able to, to, to cause a fumble. And here's an opportunity. I've caused something here. We've got the fumble. We get the ball in, in like a um, chip shot uh, range. And LT, you, you've done it. You put the um, Giants into the playoffs, so I'm really, you know, ecstatic about this. I'm thinking, well, wow, commercials, uh, you know, everything. And then Danello, he misses the field goal. Here comes the ball. Here's the kick by Danello. No good. No good. Hit the upright. And so, you know, there goes your emotion again. You're down, now you're at your lowest point. I cannot believe this. But um, my roommate back then, uh, Byron Hunt, he was able to cause another turnover right afterwards and, and we'll play an exception. And we went down and we scored. And it was the first time the Giants in the, in the playoffs. And uh, needless to say, this place went crazy. Here comes the snap. Here's the boot. The Giants win! The Giants win! In 1981, Lawrence Taylor made the Giants a playoff contender. In 1986, he made them a Super Bowl champion.
Despite the lingering fallout from off-field problems, Taylor enjoyed the greatest season of his career. He shattered the team sack record, earned All-Pro and Pro Bowl honors, and was a unanimous choice for league MVP, the first time a defender had won the award since 1971. 1986, I was coming up with some adversity, so um, I had a lot to prove to uh, my teammates, myself, um, fans, a lot of other things. A lot of people had a lot, my family, a lot to prove to a lot of different people. But I remember as I started to get my confidence back that I was still the same Lawrence Taylor. I still had what it took to, to play the game. I started to play better and better and better, just like the team we turned into a Super Bowl season, and I was able to turn my year into a, a MVP year. Just knowing, because anytime any game can knock you out, any play can knock you out, and you got to be on your on your game the whole time, every play, 60 minutes, every game. That's what kept us going. And I think that's how I was able to win an MVP that year or the accolades that year because I was able to stay on my game, uh, stay intense because I had something to prove. In 1986, MVP was spelled LT. And the Giants star continued to excel in the conference playoff. <laughs> Tanner inside the 10, throws wildly, intercepted! There goes Taylor down to the 20! 10, touchdown! LT! LT! Way to go! The bitter booing of giant seasons past was now replaced by a Meadowlands chant exalting New York's greatest football hero. After resounding playoff victories over the 49ers and Redskins, Lawrence Taylor and the Giants were Super Bowl bound at last. Lawrence Taylor's finest season ended with the New York Giants' greatest triumph. Giants 39, the Broncos are 20. The Giants have accomplished something that many people thought they would never see. I've had a lot of accolades. I've had a lot of uh, media coverage. And so uh, how much is too much? And I think um, um, as time has gone, uh, goes by, it makes it easier for me to make the transition back to uh, Lawrence Taylor, now, you know, away from LT and back to Lawrence Taylor. And, um, it's, and, I, and I don't want to get to a point where I am start getting a big head about myself. <laughs> What's that, babe? Hey, do it. Good, good, good. Hey, can I take a picture with you? Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Hey, Brian, how you doing, sir? That's a real nice. Who did this? Giles. Garrett Giles. That's nice. Thank you. Isn't that fabulous? You did this? I uh, hope you got another one for sale, right? The, the, the essence of Lawrence is really his honesty, his dead honesty. You ask him a question, you get an answer. Now that may not be the answer that somebody else wants to hear, whether it's the coach or the general manager or another team, but you get a dead honest answer. Nowhere to go. So, in 1993, uh, everyone has the same question. Um, I talked to Dan, and, and he's excited about the prospects of, of what can happen for this year coming up. I'm excited because he's excited. And if uh, he's excited, I, can, I I'm, want to be a part of that. And um, so we, we, we talk over some certain things. And um, add up. probably looks like if my leg is oh, oh, NFL ready, I will be on back with the Giants. The leg the injury. In 1992, Lawrence Taylor, for the first time, faced football mortality. He had known all about career-ending injuries. On a Monday night in 1985, it was his clean tackle that rendered such a fate to quarterback Joe Theismann. The fact that Taylor missed only one game in his first 10 seasons says more about his fortitude than just his plain good fortune. I don't think there's ever, ever been a player 
who's had any greater tolerance for pain than Lawrence Taylor. I mean, he just refuses to accept that he's hurt or that he won't get well quicker than anybody else. The most unusual aspect of Lawrence Taylor's Iron Man endurance is the fact that he's never been one to shy away from physical contact. In high school and grade school, uh, <laughs> hidden has always been a part of Everything we did, you know, you gotta, uh, you know, hit something. I played baseball, I played basketball, and great sports, and you know, but nothing gave you a thrill or sent chills up your body or excitement through your, uh, through your head like um, football because of the contact. The contact was always the most important thing to me. LT was at his menacing best whenever he spotted number seven Ron Jaworski across the line of scrimmage. Despite Ron's league MVP and Super Bowl credentials, the Eagle quarterback could never escape the giant linebacker. Great quarterback, and I think he was a great leader of men. But it was something about Ron, because at the time when I was in the league, when Ron was in the league, there was, there was like, let's say 28 out of the 28 quarterbacks. He may have been the slowest. Man, you know, Rod was not going to um, do a whole lot of running. Except running for his life from Lawrence Taylor. No other quarterback in the NFL has been pursued more fiercely or sacked more often by LT than Ron Jaworski. The one thing that stands out is playing against the Giants, I always had to know where he was. I mean, the minute I walked out of the huddle, it was, where's LT, where's LT, where's LT? And I mean, I, I knew when he was coming, he'd give me that little grin, that little wink, you know, and I knew, I knew the darn guy was coming after me no matter where he was. We were playing the Giants up the Meadowlands in 1986, and now I've been played against LT for a lot of years, and, and Buddy Ryan says, well, Byers going to block him, you know, we can handle him. And I'm thinking, you know, I'm talking to Ted Plum, our offensive coordinator, geez, why don't we slide the line? Why don't we get a tackle out on him? Oh, Buddy said uh, that, that Keith Byers can block him. I said, I've played against this guy for seven or eight years now, and when he comes, nobody can block him. Well, I'll tell you, the game went on. I think the first time I dropped back, I got whacked in the side of the head. 
Second time he comes, and he comes charging in there. Keith comes, I mean, charging at him. I mean, he's going to, you know, he's going to knock him down, and LT gives him the old old lay and goes over him, sacks him. The third time he comes in, and I guess Keith is now thinking a little bit, well, I'm trying to switch up. He goes down to cut him. LT jumps six feet near over the top of him, drills me in the back again. I said, yeah, buddy, you did a heck of a job of really putting Keith Byers on him. The next game, we're playing the Giants, but he says, I think we're going to slide the line this time. <laughs> I said, thank you, coach. <laughs> At his New Jersey restaurant and sports bar, the good-natured Jaworski agreed to take one more bruising video stroll down memory lane with Lawrence Taylor. You see a halfback picked him up, a GMO didn't do a good job, couldn't handle him with the size. You see a fullback couldn't handle him, you see a tackle couldn't handle him, you see Ron Baker, a guard couldn't handle him. I mean, what do you do? How do you, how do you stop this guy? You don't. One thing about Ron was that he always liked to throw to his right. So, and I'm always coming from the right side, so it's always going to be a blind, blind shot for me. It seems like every time we play him, I always would have at least two to three picture perfect. You know, he'd be like that, like a Heisman Trophy, and I'm mean, picture perfect. I'm like, he can't get no better than this. You coming straight down on him, full head of steam. There's nothing a defensive player would want any better than that. And every game, he would give him about two or three of those. Boy, I must be a masochist wanting to watch this. You know, there's vintage LT to me. He has a chance to probably make a real big hit, and yet has great presence that goes to strip the ball. He you know, just knows what he's doing. Maybe he took his shots at me, but I think there were times he could have really cleaned my clock. And uh, because of maybe the, the mutual friendship uh, we had had for each other, uh, he just made the play rather than go with the, the real hard hit. But uh, he was a very, very clean player. The one thing about LT, he was aggressive, hard hitting, but he was never a cheap shot. LT, you came in the game at the right time. There were a lot of slow, stationary quarterbacks around at the time. The Cunninghams weren't there, the Elways weren't there, the guys that could move around. So thanks to guys like me, you became the star you are. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what, hey, if I had about another 27 Ron Jaworski's left in the league, I wouldn't retire for the next 50 years, I'm telling you. <laughs> That's not right. I'll tell you, he's right there. Look, he made it. Yeah, he sent me through my first couple, two or three on um, Pro Bowls. <laughs> hey, I didn't send you to all them Pro Bowls. How about the guys that were supposed to block you? They were the ones. Why don't you talk about those guys, not me? They didn't know where that X was. You did it. <laughs> The Islanders and Flyers tied at five. Pittsburgh beat Washington and Chicago sacked Detroit eight to six. That was hard. <laughs> that was hard, homie. That was hard. Man, now you have more respect for me and the other guys well, look, in the business. See, in now. the movies, though, we got takes. You know, look at that over here. Yeah, the meeting is over. It's over when I say it's over. Hey, you're out of line. You're way out of line. It was funny playing golf with LT because because he's LT and has this uh, you know uh, notoriety of being an outstanding golfer. And by the way, he is a very good golfer, but he's always got to be the big hitter. Uh oh, uh oh, there's trouble! Oh! <laughs> I don't know. We can make this whole thing a golf video. The 10 favorite tips by LT. No, listen, I, I'm going to be honest now. When he starts talking about golf and he's giving me tips and stuff, I shake my head and, oh, yeah, yeah, and I don't hear one word he says. Grip it and rip it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> hey, and that's that used to be my motto. I don't care where it goes, but it won't be here long. This is called optimism at its best. You know, <laughs> <laughs> is that a club he doesn't like? Is that, I want to see this one. You make it trick You better have some band-aids ready here. Watch this. I've never seen a rock lose yet. <laughs> 
Everybody wants to get on me because I hit one bad shot a little bit right into the mouth on the rocks. <laughs> and I take a double bogey on the hole. But do we also realize I shoot 74 for the day? So he pulls up to my house this once. Honest to God, he calls at 6 o'clock. I said, where in the hell are you going to play golf at 6 o'clock? But the guy does. He truly does get up early to play. Pulls into my house. Um, <laughs> It's about 7 o'clock now. He's got black leather pants on. <laughs> and he goes, you got a golf shirt that goes with these? Are you calling anything airborne good, Mark? <laughs> a Lawrence Taylor golf video is a possibility. Maybe. But his grip it and rip it tip may never be as successful as his advice on how to grip it and strip it. When I go to tackle someone, um, Anybody can just tackle you and bring you down to the ground. Anybody can do that. And, uh, that's, uh, my son can do that. Uh, my daughters can do it even better. Uh, but uh, I look for something extra. You know, when you're going for a quarterback, uh, going to sack the quarterback. He's already got his back turned. He can't see you anyway. So, I mean, or, or you're running behind somebody. They can't see you anyway. So what I try to do is bring the ball with him. Bring the ball with them, that, because it adds something to it. And now it's funny how around the league, everybody goes for the strip. And, and I like to think that they've been watching some of my highlight tapes. Lawrence Taylor has always been a headliner. He is one of a precious few NFL players who has never wilted under the torrid glare of the media spotlight, often reserving his greatest performances for the largest audience. I remember that game as a Thanksgiving Day game, 
and I had a bad knee. Matter of fact, I didn't even start that game, and I was getting kind of teed off about that. I was just acting like a little kid over on the sideline, cussing and fussing and, and um, not having a good time whatsoever. And I said, well, if they tell me to go in, I'm not going in. While LT sulked, the Lions strolled through the undermanned Giants defense. And the pain in Taylor's knee was quickly forgotten. Well, the second quarter, you know, Bill looks over at me and says, listen, get ready to go in there. Boom, I'm out there. In the blink of an eye, Taylor altered the tempo of the football game. Running lanes closed and blocking schemes crumbled as LT personally destroyed the once prosperous Lions attack. With the score tied and the Lions at the Giants' goal line, LT picked that moment to score the first points of his NFL career. The pass I saw in my mind, I knew exactly what the play was before it even uh, uh, developed. And I said, if they throw this ball here, I'm going to go all the way. They've got King on the left side as a running back. Danderson looking in, zone for a pass. He's looking for King, intercepted. He's going to go down the right side. Lawrence down to the 20, 30, down to the 40. He might go all the way. He's going to go in. And I remember when I got to about the 40-yard line, I said, what I want to do when I get in this end zone? I don't have anything. I don't know all the shuffles and and uh, the slam dunk uh, across the backboard. So I'm saying, what I'm going to do? So I decided to slide and tore all the skin off my leg. I'm saying, big old strawberries. But uh, that's a, one of my favorite plays of my career. Taylor virtually duplicated these heroics six years later when another national TV audience under a different dome witnessed a wounded LT in even more dire circumstances. Fallen quarterback Phil Simms was on the sidelines with young Jeff Hostetler making his first NFL start, a debut that opened with a flourish. Hostetler drops back, looks left. He's going left and going way deep, way down. He's got Baker to the 40 yard line. Still in the to the 30, he'll score. What a pass by Hostetler, 85 yards to Baker. The Giants would not score another touchdown for the rest of the night. So Lawrence Taylor took it upon himself to seize control of the game. All he did was make 10 tackles with three quarterback sacks and two forced fumbles, holding the Saints at bay until the Giants could find a way to win. I remember in the game in New Orleans, I think it was 1988 season, and after that game, in a way, he was so great that night that that's one of the few games that I ever saw that I felt that a defensive player won the game. Lawrence Taylor that night won that game. Lawrence had a terrible shoulder injury. He just shouldn't have been playing. And he had to uh, redo the harness between series. Every time he'd go to the sideline, they'd fix the shoulder on him. His will made him ignore things like pain sometimes. People call it determination, whatever it is, he just had it, and uh, he just would not give in. He was going to make it the way he wanted to make it. Deep into the fourth quarter, Taylor and the defense stopped New Orleans one last time, giving kicker Paul McFadden the opportunity to complete the story with a happy ending. This is the game. It's on the line right here. The 25 yard spot. Ball is up, and it's going to be good. Giants are on top! Paul McFadden made the field goal, but Lawrence Taylor had won the game. Well, I think it was his greatest moment ever. I mean, I know Coach Parcells, who doesn't give anybody a lot of credit, you know, too often. I remember after it was over, he was uh, saying something about it, and he started calling him Superman after that. And he meant it. And I tell you, he was almost in tears when the game was over because he knew he would just witnessed something that was beyond belief. Two years later, the Giants journeyed to Candlestick Park for a late season battle with the defending world champion 49ers. The long awaited duel between a pair of once beaten teams was a closely fought game that San Francisco ultimately won. The Niners, cocky and confident, began making their reservations for a three-peat Super Bowl appearance, but the Giants would not go away. 
After beating the Chicago Bears in the first round of the playoffs, Taylor and his teammates relish the opportunity for a San Francisco rematch. Hey, I don't understand the They stuck a fork in us and said we were done. Hey, San Francisco, they're back. We're back. They're back. Francisco, here we come. Going back to California, guys. I love talking about this game here because both games that year, the, the playoff game uh, which you're talking about now and the game uh, prior to that, uh, the, the, the time we met prior to that, when it was 7-3, the two greatest football games I've ever played in uh, since I've been in the National Football League. Why? Simply because everything else was completely blocked out of just our 11 people on the field and their 11 people on the field. And uh, I tell you, it was just like a hard fought throughout uh, the game. I had no sense, sense of time. I had no idea how much time was left on the clock. I had no idea what quarter we was in. I had no idea um, what the score of the game was. It was just like one of those, like a battle that just took forever to end. You know, it just went on and on and on. I just got lost in the game. I tell you, it was just, it was very exciting. That's where the jam on that too, okay? Hey, um, Keep hammering them. Keep hammering those outside receivers. Number two, number two. Taylor would have a crucial role in two key plays that decided the outcome of the game. Strong side right with the tight end. Montana looking. Plenty of time. Rolls away now. Runs away. Eludes the tackle. His head fumbles the ball. Free ball. Leonard Marshall caught him with his helmet right in the middle of the back, upper part of the back. You know, a good, legit hit. Marshall's bullseye was made possible by Taylor's relentless charge, pursuit which forced Montana into the onrushing path of the sack and a game-ending injury. Two New York field goals narrowed San Francisco's fourth quarter lead to a single point. But unless the Giants forced one more turnover, the Niners would be on their way to a Super Bowl three-peat. Young turns, hands off, break into the line. Giants hold him, fumble! The Giants have the ball! Lawrence Taylor came up with the ball. I do remember that play, but I remember it only in the context of that the great players make the great plays at the crucial times. That was not a surprise to me because he'd exhibited that characteristic over the course of his career. It's when the most is on the line, that's when the greatness shows. He's got the distance. It is good. Good. And the good. Giants are going to Tampa Bay. It's over for the three piece. It's over. Two clutch plays from Lawrence Taylor allowed the New York Giants to win the NFC crown and earn a berth in the Super Bowl for the second time in four years. On a day dominated by much larger issues, the New York Giants and the Buffalo Bills met in Super Bowl 25. A strategy that de-emphasized pass rushing limited Lawrence Taylor's effectiveness. But the intangibles he first brought to the Giants in 1981 were evident throughout the game. <laughs> In this, the closest and most dramatic Super Bowl of all, it was the team that out-hit and out-hustled its opponent that ultimately prevailed. Once again, Lawrence Taylor's Giants were champions. But for Lawrence Taylor, the person, the victory was symbolic of success that had nothing to do with Super Bowl rings. He's fallen into some problems. He's recognized that he's wrong. He knows the difference between right and wrong. And uh, he knows he does some things that he shouldn't, and he's trying to get, a, get try, you know, he's tried to get his act together as he has. 
and deserves a lot of credit, but I think that, that he's a, a very decent person. But I think if you're playing left tackle and you're trying to block him, I don't know how decent he is. The, 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 the best thing I've accomplished, because I've done some bad things in my life. I'm not a choir boy. Of course, we all know this. And I was able to overcome those things, not through just because I'm uh, uh, through my personality, no, because through my play, through my play as a, as a ball player, which allowed me to, to show the real LT uh, or show his personality. You know, I've done a lot of good things in the, in, the, in the world of football, but I've done a lot of bad things also, a couple. And without Bill Parcells, Bill Belichick, uh, George, the giant organization, my friends on the team, my friends uh, outside of football, my family, of course, I think I would not have made it in uh, in this world, pretty much, because um, without those guys, without the people I just mentioned, I, I would have just fell by the wayside. But but those guys keep staying behind me, pushing me, uh, saying everything's going to be all right. Hey, allowed me to to uh, stay in there and fight, and um, I'm very appreciative for that. He has been the premier defensive player of his generation, a pioneer who has become the paragon of the modern-day linebacker. But his greatest contribution has been to his team. Before Lawrence Taylor came to the Giants, they had been losers for nearly two decades. Since Lawrence Taylor's arrival, they have been winners and champions. In the hollowed skies of winter, a season comes full circle. Champions captured in metal, legends etched in gold and silver. Precious stones that tell the story of a team and the price that is paid for victory. We had done something that no one else had ever done. 
We had gone from utter trash to gold. gold. He will hunt you down and tell you, make the frickin' play. The only way to escape that kind of wrath was to be perfect. I'm running out in the field, and Charlie says, you better take care of that ball. And Drew was kind of standing next to me, and he says, Dad, go out there and sling it. And I got them together. I said, guys, we've worked our rear ends off to get here. But I emphatically made the point that this game's worth a big blanking ring. ring. They would start saying, kill Bubba, kill. Kill Bubba, kill. You were ready to snap this guy's neck if necessary. And in that precise moment, when you know that the next ball game will be in the Super Bowl, it's, oh man, it just, it just doesn't get any better. It doesn't get any better than that. And so the countdown begins to the greatest Super Bowl team of all time. One team more perfect than any other. 11 men, flawless, on either side of an imaginary line. Offensively brilliant. Defensively undaunted. Men work a lifetime for this moment. One game that can define a career. It's a game we all love. It's their game. It's our game. This NFL Films production has been brought to you by NFL Network. Watch the National Football League 24 hours a day on NFL Network.